Hello, my name is Tadek Wazork, and this is my Roman Republic project. For this project, I decided to create a mini movie in which I write a script about some events that occurred in the Roman Republic. My movie is called, or my mini movie is called, Rome Will Never Surrender to quote the great Winston Churchill. So let's begin. The Roman legions stand in formation, ready for battle. Consuls P. Valerius Popli Poplicola and M. Horatius Pulvilius lead the legions, their armor gleaming in the sunlight. Mars Porcena, the formidable king of Clusium, and his Etruscan army approach the field. Porcena surveys the scene, his eyes fixed on the Roman legions. Porcena, destroy the legions and the city will be mine. The Etruscans charge forward, their war cries filling the air. The Romans brace themselves for the onslaught. Pulvilius spots Porcena amidst the chaos and determination fills his eyes. He breaks away from the battle and charges towards the Etruscan king. Pulvilius, with angry determination, I'll end this once and for all. Pulvilius fights his way through the ranks of Etruscan soldiers, his sword slashing and parrying with skill. He reaches Porcena, his blade aimed for a decisive strike. But the Etruscans quickly notice the Roman consul's intentions and attack him from all sides. The wounded Pulvilius staggers back, blood staining his armor. Poplicola, seeing his comrade in danger, rushes to his aid, fending off the Etruscans with a renewed fury. Poplicola, defiant. Hold on, Pulvilius, we can't falter now. The Roman legions witness their leader's retreat, their morale shaken. Panic sets in and they begin to flee across the Pons Sublicius, the wooden bridge that leads to Rome. Lars Porcena, watching the chaos unfold, laughs triumphantly. Porcena, teeth bared, they flee like rats, take the bridge now. The Etruscans surge forward, eager to pursue the retreating Romans, but their triumph is short-lived. The Romans, realizing the importance of the bridge, desperately work to destroy it. Roman soldiers hack away at the wooden structure, their determination fueled by the urgency of the situation. As the bridge starts to crumble, Porcena's laughter turns to rage. Porcena, who is bellowing, stop them, we must cross the Tiber. But it is too late. The bridge collapses into the river, leaving the Etruscans stranded on the opposite bank. Porcena watches in disbelief as, he, as his chance to conquer Rome slips out of his hands. Porcena's triumphant expression fades into one of frustration and anger. He turns to his men, determined to salvage the situation. Porcena, reforming his army, will find another way. Rome will be mine. The Etruscan army regroups, their eyes still fixed on Rome. The battle continues to unfold. The fate of the city hangs in the balance, but the Romans, resilient and defiant are not ready for surrender. And that is the end of Act 1. And then we start with Act 2. The Roman Senate chamber is filled with tension and concern. Senators and officials gather, their faces etched with worry over the impending threat from Lars Porcena and his Etruscan army. Valerius Poplicola, now wounded from the battle, addresses the assembly. Poplicola, gravely, we must not falter in the face of this Etruscan invasion. Our survival as a republic depends on our unity and resilience. We must defend Rome at all costs. The senators nod in agreement. Their determination shining through their worried expressions. Horatius Pulvilius, also injured but resolute, speaks up. Pulvilius, we cannot allow Porcena to seize our beloved city. We must fight with Every ounce of strength and courage that we possess, the spirit of Rome cannot be broken. The senators and the consuls, inspired by the words of Poplicola and Pulvilius, rise to their feet. Their collective voice resonates with determination. Senators and officials, for Rome, for freedom! Rome is now in a state of heightened activity as preparations for the impending siege are underway. Citizens join the effort, fortifying the city walls and barricades. Women and children work side by side with soldiers, showing their unwavering support for the Republic. 
Lirius, now bearing the name Poplicola, given by the people, surveys the scene with pride. Valerius, to the people, this city will not fall. We shall defend our homes, our families, and our freedom. Remember the spirit of our ancestors, who built this great republic with their blood and sacrifice. The people cheer, their resolve strengthened by Valerius's words. They continue their labor with renewed vigor, driven by their love for Rome. Valerius now sits at a makeshift table, poring over the maps and battle plans. Horatius Pavilius, still recovering from his wounds, enters the shelter. Pavilius with determination. Valerius, we must devise a strategy to counter Porcena's next move. Our city's fate hangs in the balance. Valerius, nodding. Indeed, Pavilius, we cannot allow Porcena to breach our defenses. We must anticipate his every move and respond with strength and cunning. They engage in a heated discussion mapping out their next steps. Their friendship and shared commitment to Rome drive their decision-making. The Etruscan army, led by Lars Porcena, masses at the gates of Rome. The tension in the air is palpable as the Romans stand ready to defend their city. Valerius and Pulvilius, their wounds still visible, stand before the army of Rome, inspiring their soldiers. Valerius, raising his sword to the sky, fight for Rome. Fight for freedom. Let our ancestors guide our hands and strengthen our resolve. We are Romans, and we will never surrender. The Roman soldiers roar with determination, their weapons held high. They charge forward, meeting the Etruscans head to head in a fierce battle. Senators and officials anxiously await the news of the battle. Suddenly, a messenger bursts into the chamber, or the consuls breathless and covered in dirt. Messenger, excitedly, victory! The Romans have triumphed. Porcena's forces have been defeated. The room erupts with cheers and jubilation. The senators and the consuls embrace, tears of relief streaming down their faces. Rome has prevailed against all odds. Rome will never surrender. The end.